Hey, what's up guys, Mendel here. So today I wanna to show you the best compressors for mixing metal, or should I say, in my opinion, the best compressors for mixing metal. Well, I would say if I do just the best compressor for mixing metal, I'll get more views. But then you get more haters saying like, no, it's all subjective, well, well, but that will give more dislikes. And I don't care about the haters. So here are the best metal compressors, the best. <laughs> so here are the best compressors for metal. In my opinion, haters gonna hate. <laughs> Here we go. All right, so here we are. So it's your first time here. My name is Mendel. I'm a mixing engineer and a composer, and uh, I love rock and metal. Hopefully you do as well. And if you like this video, you can hit subscribe. It really helps me out. Give me a thumbs up and drop down a comment. I'm really curious. What's your favorite compressor? Maybe it's not even in this video. Probably isn't in this video. But please let me know. I'm really curious about new plugins and compressors and kind of that kind of stuff. All right, so let's first take a listen to the song, uh, to the riff. This is a new song of mine from my upcoming solo album. Let's first take a listen and then we're gonna dig into the fun stuff, the compressors. Okay, here we go. Okay, so you get the point. That's enough teasing for the new album. All right, so I'm gonna jump straight to my favorite new compressor, which is called The Glue from a company called Cytomic. Now they were kind enough to give me a license because I checked out the demo mode and I was just blown away by it. I was fully blown away. I, it's based on an SSL bus compressor and I love that compressor for mixing metal and rock kind of stuff. And this version of that compressor is my, like I said, it's my current favorite compressor for drums. So most of the time when I compress drums, it's mainly only on the shells, which is kick, snare, and the toms. Um, sometimes I do it on parallel, I have a separate parallel channel. But for this demonstration purpose, I'm just gonna put the plugins on the shells bus and then just have fun with it. Okay, so I'm gonna settle the shells and uh, I'll show you why I love this uh, compressor so much. So this is without the compressor. And now with it, Absolutely love how it like it pushes everything together. So I'm gonna switch back and forth a couple of times. So in mixed context. So you can definitely hear, hopefully, when the plugin's on, uh, it makes it sound more like a record. Like it's, it's, it sounds weaker without that compressor on it. So yeah, make sure you check it out. The glue from Cytomic, my current favorite compressor. No joke, I absolutely love this thing to death now. All right, forgot to mention, uh, first we're gonna check out my favorite compressors for drums, and then we're gonna do some compressors on the master bus. Okay, so then another plugin I use a lot of times on the drums is the Slade Digital FG Red which is really punchy. So these are my favorite settings. Pretty slow attack-ish and medium to fast release. And, oh, I forgot to turn on the drive. I have to drive around, around here. I'm not sure what it does, but every time it sounds better when I put it almost to the max. But let's take a listen. So this is without it. And now on. Perhaps a bit too much compression. Is there such a thing as too much compression? I don't know. Yeah, absolutely love it. I think this is based on a focus right compressor. I don't know, it sounds awesome.
Again, it sounds weaker without it. Yeah, absolutely love that compressor. To death. Now, sometimes I like to use the, what's it called again? The stressor plug, the FG Stress, I think it's called, from Slate Digital. And it depends on the song or it depends on the style of music, but sometimes I use it only on the snare and sometimes I like to use it on the shells bus. But what I almost always do is put attack on 10, release as fast as possible, and this around four. And there was something with, the, I think I put link on, I can't remember, I didn't save it as a preset. So what the cool thing is like a lot of compressors have like a mix knob. So with the stressor, I really like to push it and then use the mix knob. So let's push it all the way. Yep, also pretty cool. So when I compress cymbals, I like to use an 1176 style compressor. And Slide Digital has a really cool one for the cymbals, um, which is the modern, this one. What I always do is everything as fast as possible. It compressed the cymbal so the wash is more even, which is really cool in a mix, at least in my mixes, I think. Like it lengthens, that's the word, lengthens the decay of the cymbals, which is, it's a cliche to say, but it sounds more like a record to me that instead of like, like a peak, like psh, and it's down, more like that psh. That's gonna be a meme probably. But sometimes, instead of the 1176, I use the Fab Filter C2, which is really cool, which doesn't have a lot of, I wouldn't say, what to say, like, um, um, like vintage character, if that makes sense. It's really, well, it's just the style, yeah, but really clean, like no mojo in it. All right, so when I'm mixing really extreme metal and I need a lot of transit to poke through like all the crushing guitars and stuff like that, my favorite compressor for that is the UED 2500 from API. Can't find it now, nice fail. <laughs> Where is it? I have the mono version. Oh, here it is, I'm blind. What's up people? I'm blind, I'm getting blind. Okay, this compressor is, compressor? This compressor is really aggressive but that's good in a good way. So let's solo the shells. Like that's aggressive. Let's just listen to this part, just the shells. 
and I'll turn it off and on again. Let's check it with the drums over at the rest of the kit. So if I would have to dial it a bit better, uh, let's see. Like those toms are like killing it. But what I like to do with this one is I use it on a separate channel parallel and but now for a demonstration purpose and easy easiness, I'll use uh, the mix knob, but I like to overdo it. And then turn down the mix knob. It really makes that snare pop. That's off. On. Like it sounds, <laughs> this one's so aggressive, it sounds like really weak when you turn it off. Do that again. Let's loop that part. Let's listen to the other snare part. Here we go. My goodness, I love this. Like that whole part has less impact without the API 2500. My goodness. Love this one to death. My goodness, love that one. Okay. All right, so before we go to the bus compressor, we go to a sponsor. You probably noticed I have um, headphones and these are the Olo Audio headphones. So these are reference mixing headphones. Love them to death. Um, I've, been couple, I've been using them for a couple of weeks, I think two to three weeks now. And I actually started to get used on mixing on headphones. With previous headphones, I was not feeling it. So yeah. So that's why I'm using them and also to prevent the mic bleed from speakers. If you would like to know more about these Olo Audio headphones, there's a link in the description box below. Okay, so let's go to the master bus. Here we go. Before we go to the master bus, I'm gonna put the glue on. That's my favorite now with the settings. Besides using the glue on the um, on the shells bus, I also like to use it on the master bus, but then with less compression. So late attack, quick release. I'm not a big fan of early attacks. So if you don't know about sidechain filters, so this is basically that it doesn't listen to 
everything below 100 hertz. So the kick can shine through a bit more. Subtle, but I absolutely love it. And also it has like oversampling functions and stuff like that. Love it. Yeah. Okay, so that's the glue. Um, before I had the glue, I used the FG Grey on my mixes 99% of the time. With these settings. Really transparent, really like that. It really, I don't know, it pushes the mix, but in a pleasant way, not like in an overly pumpy way. Really like that. Probably gonna say really like that a lot of times in this video. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely love that one. So besides that, I also sometimes like to use the Waves SSL compressor, which is really cool. And they updated the GUI, by the way, which I love. Almost sounded makes the kick thicker, or is it just me? It feels like it, pretty cool if I'd say. So one of the newer plugins is uh, the BX Townhouse. Let me see where it is. There it is. This is based on an old SSL bus compressor from the UK, I believe. And one thing I love about Plugin Alliance is they almost all of their plugins have that GUI resize function, which I absolutely adore. So it's nice and big and I'm working on a 4K screen. So love them for that. How can you not love this one? It really lets the transients of the kick and snare go through really, really well.
to my ears, it doesn't fatten up the kick like the, um, the SSL comp, but that isn't a bad thing. It depends on the mix. Like if I would do like a death metal track with a lot of fast kicks, I would not want a compressor to even add more low end with my, uh, on my kick drums. All right, so that's it for the video. Um, let me know in the comments, what's your favorite compressor in this video? Like I'm really curious because these are my favorite compressors and I have my personal favorites even amongst these, but perhaps there are certain plugins you think, oh, yeah, that one sounds like, no, not really my taste or that one you showed is really cool. And besides that, what's your all time favorite plugin? Compressor, plugin, ah, maybe both. What's your all time favorite compressor or what's your all time favorite plugin? I'm really curious. And let me know in the comments what you want to see next. I'm happy to do anything. That's what she said. Anyway, so uh, hopefully you learned something today. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up. And like I said, leave down a comment and see you guys next time. Thanks, cheers.